Hey, this is a screencast series called Vim on Alphabet. My name is Josh Branchot, and this is episode 14 in the series. In this episode, we'll be looking at the underscore character. The underscore has two pretty weird uses that we're going to see. Let's jump into it. This first use of the underscore character is to motion down a specific number of lines. Specifically, it motions down one less than the count you give. This might seem a little obtuse or unintuitive at first, but we'll look at a couple examples that I hope are clarifying. To start, let's compare the underscore command with the plus command. By contrast, the plus command motions you down the same number of lines as the count you give, rather than the count minus one. So if I were to hit three plus, then I go down to here. So since this was my current line, I move one, two, three lines down. Now if I go back up and try the same thing with underscore, hitting three underscore, I move down three lines, including the line that I started on. One, two, three. So the reason this distinction is useful is for making it easier to go from the count in our head to what we type. This is best emphasized in the context of a list, especially when we start using some actions with the motions. Looking at this list of items, let's say I want to delete the first three items in the list. If I were to hit D3+, I end up deleting four items. That's because the initial line gets deleted plus the three following lines. Even though I'm thinking and typing three, I end up affecting four lines. Hopefully now you're starting to see where the minus one from the count is coming into play. Restoring the list, Instead, I could say d3 underscore, which ends up deleting exactly three lines. I end up affecting my current line plus the two following it. With underscore, if I want to act on an exact number of lines, I can do just that. What I type is what I get. The other part of the underscore motion is that it targets the first non-blank character on the line. The counterpart is g underscore, which targets the last non-blank character on the line. This is useful in the context of a visual selection. If I'm to hit V3 underscore, it is going to visually select to the beginning of that third line. Whereas if I hit V3 G underscore, then it visually selects to the end of that third line, which may be what I'm looking for if I'm trying to do some sort of range substitution or yank. The second use for the underscore character is in modifying various character classes by including a zero width end of line pattern in those character classes. But first off, what is a character class? There are groupings of characters that we can match against. We saw some custom ones in past episodes wrapped in brackets. Vim has some built-in ones that we can concisely reference if we're able to memorize them. For instance, if we were to include backslash D in a pattern, that would be equivalent to this matching any digit character. Similarly, with backslash w, we get this grouping of characters that are considered word characters, basically things that would make up a variable name. There are a whole bunch of other character classes. Check out the help files to see those. The underscore comes into play when we inject it into the middle of these character class shortcuts. For instance, backslash underscore w will give us everything in the word grouping plus the end of line character. Similarly, backslash underscore s will give us a character grouping made up of space, tab, and the end of line character. I don't have much in mind for practical use cases for these modified character classes. One idea I had though was to use the modified white space group to find phrases in a document that might be broken across new lines. Given this text here, I can try to find the phrase Taco Tuesday, but I don't get any matches. However, if I replace that literal space with backslash underscore s, you can see it highlight the end of the line. Adding a star will have it include the additional white space. And then Tuesday, now I found what I was looking for. The underscore character also combines with some other special characters in pattern matching. The underscore caret atom will match the beginning of the line. The underscore dollar atom will match the end of the line. Then there's this modified version of the period atom, 
whereas period on its own represents any single character, the underscore version represents any single character or an end of line. We can get a fun effect with that. Jumping to the top of the file and searching for backslash underscore period followed by star, we end up highlighting the remainder of the file. You'd very likely not want to include this combination of characters in any pattern matching you're doing. And just as the underscore modifies the built-in character classes, it can also be included with any custom character grouping to get the same effect. I introduced all of this to highlight the depth of pattern matching capabilities that Vim has. I don't have any example of how you'd use these, though. I'd love to hear from you if you have anything in mind. That's it for this episode. Check out the help files to learn more. In the next episode, we'll look at the dash character.